and I will send Preston on. Because I said, that's not fair to us as a family to advocate for him. He's almost 15. He's in the years. He wants to spend the rest of his time with his family, which I can't imagine not, as you all would feel the same way. So I get a phone call on Friday from his mom. Not the st- Well, I got a text first from the state that said, we just got off the phone with biological mom, which you guys have all met. She's been sitting on here in the front row. They just sold their house for the second time. If it goes through, they close on October 14th. But the state is requiring her to live in Missouri till next May. Their house is paid for. They don't want to have a house payment. They live off of his disability. And I was like, oh, God. So I just told her, I said, listen, Jamie and I have worked two jobs basically our whole life. You're not past that. I, sometimes I feel like talking to a biological parent like, ooh. But if she wants her kid, she's going to have to do what she's got to do, you know. I said, you know what, I know you got other kids, but you work it. You work when they're in school. You work it, one of you work at night, one of you work during the day. You make it happen. You show the state that you are gung-ho. You are really on target to get Preston back. So long story short, we move up to yesterday. Well, Friday I was sitting over at Jesse's work with her and um, got a phone call from mom and she was squealing. She's like, I, I'm just so out of breath. I can't hardly even talk. And I said, what did they say? But then they didn't want me on the call because they know I speak. I know the laws. I know the laws for foster parenting, and I'm going to push them in a corner as far as I can. And um, she said, I don't know what you said. (laughs) I I said, I didn't say anything. It's probably what I didn't say because I I took instruction from our therapist. And she goes, I get visits with him like I get an overnight. And I said, great, when? And she goes, they told me I had to pick him up tomorrow. She goes, we don't have it in our budget to do that. And I said, I'll meet you halfway. She's like, I have $50 till next Wednesday. I said, well, maybe you're going to just make a grilled cheese sandwich for your kids. You put that 50 bucks in your tank. And I called Jamie and I was like, can, can we just fill up their tank of gas? Can I, just, I don't want anything to show the state that she's going to fail. And uh, so anyway... We met, they, I guess they got up really early. She texted me at 6.45 and said, we're two hours from your house. I was still in bed. I was like, oh, my gosh. So I ran in and got Preston up. I was like, get up, get a shower, let me get you something fed. Get your, I got to get your stuff together. We, they ended up driving to Blue Springs, and I was cruising to get through there, and we met. They took off, and so we're going to meet halfway today. I told her I'd meet her in Boonville. But I just wanted to say thank you to God. Because it was hard for me to shut up because I do advocate for my kids because they're not the ones that live with the kids. They don't know how these kids, they cry at night. They're mad. They're angry. They're just emotions all over the board. And he hasn't been with her for six years. And she has made some poor choices. And she's admitted that to the state. I'm just thankful that the process has started. They did promise them probably by May. I told Preston, I said, good behavior in school. We'll push it up to spring break. But at least they have a goal, and I just want to thank the Lord for that because I have worked hard. (laughs) So he's not here today, but he's very excited to be with his family. Larry, the pastor would like for you to come and help us. (laughs) Larry's kind of tired today, (laughs) but I promise you'll feel better. (laughs) Make Make sure his mic's working for us. There we go. Sometimes we have to just do what this song says and forget everybody else, right? Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. When old Satan tries to fool you, just shout hallelujah. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. When old Satan tries to fool you, just shout hallelujah. Everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath 
that breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that had breath, praise the Lord. When old Satan tries to fool you, just shout hallelujah. Let everything that had breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that had breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. When old Satan tries to fool you, just shout hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Oh, when old Satan tries to fool you, just shout Hallelujah, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. When old Satan tries to fool you, just shout Hallelujah, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We praise you, Father. We give you glory and honor in this service today, God. We lift our voices unto you in thanksgiving, adoration unto you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Wanda says that Bill and Marie made it to their destination yesterday. So we praise Praise God for that. They'll be watching this probably this afternoon, won't they, Norm? (laughs) So let's just worship the Lord today and let it go as far as Arizona. Hallelujah. And everywhere else that God provides. Thank God. Gonna sing all about it, hallelujah. Gonna shout all about it, hallelujah. Can't live without a praise song. Now I'm living in a new creation. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation, praise God. Hallelujah. Gonna sing all about it, hallelujah. Gonna shout about it, hallelujah. Can't live without a praise God. Oh, now I'm living in a new creation. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation, praise God. Hallelujah. Gonna sing about it, hallelujah. Gonna shout about it, hallelujah. Can't live without a praise God. Now I'm living in a new creation. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation, praise God. Hallelujah. Gonna sing all about it, hallelujah. Gonna shout all about it, hallelujah. Can't live without it, praise God. Now I'm living in a new creation. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation, praise God. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation, praise God. Hallelujah. Gonna sing all about it, hallelujah. Gonna shout all about it, hallelujah. Can't live without it, praise God. Oh, now I'm living in a new creation. Now I'm drinking from the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you today. Oh, bless thank you, Jesus. Oh, we lift our voices you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you,
Christ Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. you. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Richardson, I appreciate your participation. Yes. I watch your bouncing top of your head and your arms on the TV every week. (laughs) Everybody else might not have their hands up. And yes. Bouncing. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sure. You may be seated. I mentioned uh, Bill and Marie having arrived in Arizona. What a surprise. No, wait a minute. They're in surprise. Yeah. I get muddled up. <laughs> but uh, because of Bill's absence, I. I I used to share crazy thoughts with him before service and we'd debate them for like 10 seconds. But he's not here, so I'm going to afflict you all now. (laughs) There's a new cult going around. They're called honk changers. Yeah. Um, And uh, I came face to face with one of them the other day. I was the first car in the line at a traffic light and the traffic light was red and I'm sitting there in my truck minding my own business waiting for the light to change when next thing the car behind me honk 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 (laughs) what the heck I'm gonna put my truck in reverse and honk him (laughs) really bad what's the matter with the guy but amazingly about the fourth time he honked the light changed green Well, maybe there's something in this, you know. (laughs) I don't know, but it worked. And I thought, almost thou dost convert me, you know. I I think I'm going to start trying this, you know. And I said, wait a bit. You know that you know that you know that that light is on a timer. That's what you know. You, all the technical knowledge you have is telling you that light is on a timer. And he can honk until he's blue in the face. It's not going to change. But here's the amazing thing. About the time that a honk changer has had enough of the red light, it's about to change anyway, and he blasts his horn and the light changes. That's enough to convince anybody, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> But what do you know that you know that you know? That's really important, you know? And and, and on a more serious note, quickly, when I was learning to fly in the Air Force, one of the hardest uh, phases of my flight training was called instrument flying, where, where you have no reference to outside the cockpit whatsoever, except a few instruments that you're staring at. And you've got to interpret what they're telling you as opposed to anything else you're feeling. And that's, that is, that's really hard because you're sitting there and you're saying, I know I'm in a dive. I can hear the engine speeding up. I, I know I'm in a dive. I'm going to kill myself if I don't pull back. But now look at my instruments and they say, you're flying straight and level, relax. <laughs> but I know I'm not. Everything in me is telling me my left wing is dropping. I'm going to be, t- I'm turning, I'm turning. I look at my instrument. No, you're not. You're going straight and level. That's okay. And my instructor, when I would share with him my frustrations, he would say, Dave, your feelings are going to kill you. You watch your instruments. That's the truth. Your feelings are just all a lie. Uh-huh. You're preaching my sermon today already. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I try and live like that today, but it's not an instrument panel. It's God's Word. Amen. You cannot trust your feelings. Right. And, uh, I mean, I, I've had a battle with feelings during this silly platelet thing. I mean, you get right in the middle by Wednesday, I was Mr. Despair. I mean, I was feeling bad. I was feeling without any energy. Uh, nothing was going right. I'd sit in my chair and say, why don't you get up and make yourself a cup of coffee? 
Ten minutes later, I'd be sitting in the chair saying, why don't you get up, go and make yourself a cup of coffee? <laughs> Just no energy whatsoever. <clears throat> what do you hang on to when you, with all your feelings? Right. Are oh, telling you it's a hopeless situation. What do you hang on to? I tell you, it's God's word. Okay? It's Amen. God's word. Don't trust your feelings. Believe God's word. By Friday, it was totally turned around. Amen. And uh, today I, I'm feeling fine. I really am. That's why I was able to bounce around a bit. So that, that, that's just my encouragement to you, you know. Um, get into God's Word. Don't wait until Sunday to hear God's Word. Right. Get into Amen. into God's Word. It, yes. It's got the answer for everything that you're dealing with at that point in time. And God is faithful. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Larry, we just got word last night that Lyndall Cooley has had a bad heart attack. The word this morning, he is went through surgery real good. But I'd like for us as a body, if you would stand, let's take, he's what, 60, early 60s? Yeah, he's not, not an old not person. Not that much. As old. It's probably late 50s. 50s, maybe. Has a church in Nashville area. And, you know, those people need him. Amen. His family needs him. And I want us to join together and just pray that God will undertake Amen. in what the situation is. It's a lot of things. They said the next 48 hours is crucial. So let's lift him up Amen. to God. Let's all and, stand and join and hands. pray that God will intervene for him. Larry, would you lead us, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for Lyndall Cooley. Yes, He's left you, quite an image, Lord, on your church. And we're thankful for his music ability and all the gifts that you've given him, Lord. We don't want to see them stop. And we don't want his family to be in such sorrow, Lord. We pray right now that by your spirit, Lord, your righteousness will take over in his life and make everything that's wrong right. Thank you, Father, for healing him. Thank you, Father, in advance. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we expect a good report. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank, you, Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. My God still moves. God still moves.
found that out moving up here uh, we were out of money in every way you wanted to look and you may be seated hungry and so I had my closing and they took forever and ever and it was getting past banking time about 530 and they said well your bank is still open you can go through the drive up and I thought they gave me a pretty good sized check and I wanted to deposit it. And I said, are you gonna hold it for a day? So I still wouldn't have anything. They said, no, that happens to be written on our bank and it's immediately available to you. So I praise God for that. Brother Davidson, I so thank you for what you just said up here. And I heard Jesus say, Man, this is crazy, Father. What all is going on right now? I don't want to go through it. It doesn't look right. It doesn't, it doesn't look the way I thought it would. God, why didn't you let me take these disciples, these tax collectors, these doctors? Let us get out of Jerusalem and go on up into Europe and spread this gospel a little longer. So it'll make more of an impact. Isn't that the way we would think? You know, you got some skills. God will give us a chance to use them. But he went right back to his father's word. He said, nevertheless, only what you say. So he, he followed what God was saying with his word. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm doing my best this morning because I came burdened. And I said, I've got to hear something, Lord. So I already heard it. So we can go home now, Patty. God in the heart of people, God's just still moves. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I was thinking, Linda mentioned Linda Cooley. When he was a little boy, I traveled with his uncle and his mom and dad and him. And we'd go to his, his house in St. Louis where his parents lived. And you all be seated if you want to. And uh, he'd put on a stack of records. And he'd dance all day long. All day long. As soon as those last records dropped off, he'd turn them over and listen to them all again. And he'd dance all day long. 
now at 55 or 6 or 7, whatever he is, he's, he has a church in, in uh, Franklin, Tennessee, where he's raising up worship leaders. That's his goal. But before that, he was, some of you knew about the Pensacola Revival. He was a worship leader there. So, uh, you know, it's important what you put in. Your thinker. He thought dancing all the time, worshiping the Lord. He'd just dance his little hands up. He's just a little guy. Dance and dance and dance and dance. So, anyway, I want to tell you I appreciate Logan. He's taking Brittany to the airport this morning, bright and early. He said, I'm going to hurry and try to be there for church. I got here about 15 minutes earlier than normal, and he's already here. Brittany's gone to, gone to Germany for three Sundays. Be gone three Sundays. So uh, how are you handling all of this <laughs> With, without your helpers gone? <laughs> anyway. So anyway, that's, uh, I appreciate that speaks of commitment. And in today's world, we're short of commitment. So I appreciate that. The Ives has all gone to a family, family event of some sort. Now, Clevengers are moved away. And, but you're here. Amen. Uh, I don't want to quench the spirit, but I've got a funeral this afternoon. I need to be at the funeral home at 1 o'clock. So uh, if you'll listen quick, <laughs> we'll try to say it quick. <laughs> Do you know, Wanda, if Linda still wants to be baptized? She, she talked about it. We'd like to do that next Sunday after service. I will try to get with her this week. You mentioned it to her. You live by her. And, uh, and Andrew wanted to be baptized, and maybe Patty wants to be baptized. So while the pool's warm, <laughs> do I? Oh, Heaven wants to be baptized. All right. And Laron, all right. Got a list of them already. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. So. Parker will preach next Sunday, but tell him I need him to help me with baptism, okay? I've learned how to do that in shallow water. You just need, they kneel down and just lay back. So, anyway, we want to welcome all of you to want to stay and come to that. It's at my house. So, anyway, we'll talk about that more next Sunday. I do want to announce that, keep in mind, October 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, Lynn Howe will be here in a teaching of Victorious Eschatology Conference. We are actually just hosting this. We're providing him a building, basically, all we're doing. Uh, he does this around over in the south and in the east, and I've been after him for a couple of years. I said, do one here. We'll just furnish the building. We don't have to say anything. Uh, so, I don't know, we might sing a song if he wants us to, and he, he'll tell us ahead of time. So, anyway, that'll be Thursday night the 6th, 7 o'clock, and then Friday morning at 10 o'clock, and Friday night at 7, Saturday morning at 10, and no night service, but Sunday morning at 10. What We've already got pastors coming in and got motel reservations already, pastors from uh, Canada, pastors from South Texas, uh, uh, Word of Faith pastor from Springfield, I know about those, one from Rolla. Uh, that's already committed and I, I don't know they may have called we give them a list of motels so I don't know who all's already registered so anyway we want you to be here for that meeting he generally has just just for leaders the last one he had he opened up to the public and it was filled so he said he wants to do that here so we want you here be a good greeter everywhere front both doors and uh, share with people where the bathrooms are and that kind of thing, and uh, we just want to be a, have a, a church of hospitality. And I put on Facebook we'd have a meal Thursday night, but Linda corrected me; it's going to be Friday night. So tell Brittany, she, her and Carlos kind of gets that together. So anyway, all right. And then we want to have a a little uh, some kind of a work day here before that. Uh, we need to restripe the parking lot we need to uh, 
shampoo the rug back there in the back and maybe up here again uh, we're going to do a little low budget facelift in here we're shaking, changing these window styles down and do something else uh, Ronnie's not here today Ronnie, Randy and Ronnie he's working today and we went to see her yesterday and they're going to put up some wood strips back here brown with purple behind it and then the curtains will match it's really really pretty so I told her go low budget but we want to give us a facelift before that so we'll uh, and then have general cleaning so went wash windows and doors and whatever needs to be done keep that in mind we'll make announce that a little more next Sunday okay you have anything else that's here okay got class okay Carla's helpers are are, are scarce today. <laughs> okay. If you're taking notes today, I'd like to speak on a subject called Who Are You Feeding? Who Are You Feeding? Okay. Get these little guys arranged which way to go there. In the, I'd like to start with First Thessalonians chapter five. Actually, uh, I need you to uh, pray for me. I've had a little flare up in my right eye again. I told Linda today. I said, "Would you please read my obituary? I can't see that fine print, <coughs> and it's uh, a tiny bit better." But just, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for your help. I need my right eye to see more clearly. And I thank you that I will. I thank you that I will. With all these people in agreement, I thank you that I will seek more clearly. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 5. I'm going to read off the screen because it's much clearer to me. Ye are all... The children of what? And the children of the day, and we are not of the what? Nor of what? Okay. Therefore, let us not sleep, as do others, but... Uh, thank you. Let us watch and be sober. I mean, I can see, I can see y'all. There was a time I could just tell there was bodies. I couldn't tell individuals. Now, I can see it today, but okay, next. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. And, but let us who are of the day be what? Putting on the breastplate of what? Faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation, okay? For God hath not appointed us to, God's not appointed us to what? How many preachers tell you that, that we are? Think about that. God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain something else. Salvation, how? By our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Go ahead. Is that all of them? Okay. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. That's a pretty good promise right there. Okay. <clears throat> Wherefore, comfort you yourselves together and edify one another, even also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among. Sometimes it's hard to be at peace with ourselves. We get so frustrated, you know. We want to lash out. Be at peace with yourself. If you're not at peace with yourself, probably won't be at peace with other folks. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. And support the. Be patient toward all men. That's mankind, not just male gender. All right. 
See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Thank you for turning up those lights. Rejoice, how often? That's all the time. Just keep up rejoicing in your heart. And pray without ceasing. That means just have a prayer in your heart all the time. Don't shut your eyes when you're driving down the road. You know, you may run into somebody without honking. <laughs> so, you know, just pray without seeking. And everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, okay? Despise not prophesying, even though you might not understand it. Don't, don't despise it. Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of, of peace sanctify you wholly or completely. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I have one more verse. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. All right. God's in the side with you, Amen. Amen. You can't just say, I don't want to do that one no more. <laughs> okay. Try this one. Not a very good, very good circle, but probably looks like me anyway. <laughs> First of all, you are a spirit. More than anything else. That's where God lives. <laughs> You're a spirit. That's that's uh, the real you. That's the part that no one sees. It's uh, it's uh, the habit. It's the tabernacle where God lives. Your spirit is your inner man. For it to grow, you must feed it. That's my subject today. Who are you feeding? You've got to feed it. Your spirit man will only grow on spirit food, which is the Word of God. I told you that Dave is preaching my sermon already. It feeds on the Word of God. Anything else is not good, all right? When your spirit is fed the Word of God, it has the ability to do something. It has the ability to take that... Uh, spirit food and it has the ability to turn it into a force called faith when you don't have any spirit food in you your spirit is weak and it won't produce I believe in the Matthew's gospel it talks about uh, men's heart will fail them because of fear when your heart gets overcrowded and it covers that it's how can I say this? God's in there, but when we put stuff in there that's full of fear, your heart won't won't uh, function. It won't uh, do the job you need it to do. Okay, let me say it that way. I want to give you an example. Mark chapter 4. Again, I'll try to read this off the screen. And we're going to start with uh, verse 11. And he said, and this is an example, and he said unto them, unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done how? In parables, okay. That seeing they might see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time, any time they should be converted and their sins should for, be forgiven them. And he said unto them, know you not, that the, know you not this parable? If you don't understand this, then how can you know all parables? 
And here's the parable. The sower soweth what? The word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are likewise they which sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with what? Gladness, but something happened. And have no root in themselves and so endure for a time. Afterward when afflictions and persecutions arise, when other things pop up against what the word says, when we're not rooted and grounded in the word, the afflictions and persecutions win. When it rises for the word, immediately they're offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in chokes the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Okay? And these are they which are sown on good ground, which hear the word, receive it, bring forth some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Okay. Is that all those? Okay. Let's jump over to uh, the next group. Uh, verse 35. Now, and the same day, let's all say same day. Now, I left out a whole big section, and I'll just tell you what it says. The rest of it, the disciple says, what do you mean? What is this wayside? What is this? I just want to define one of them. He said, one of them is when the cares of this life enter in, it chokes the word. The care, meant, if you look it up in the dictionary, has three definitions. Worry, worry, mental anxiety, and concern. So two of the three is concern and mental anxiety. Now, we jumped over here to verse 35, and it says, and the same day. Let's all say it again. And the same day. So it's not another story. When evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships, a great crowd of people. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship really struggling and worrying and upset and wringing his hands. No. What was he doing? Asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and said unto him, Wait, Master! What's the first word they use? Care us not that we perish? He just told them, if care enters in, it chokes the word. He just told them that. Same day. And he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And what did the wind do? Ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it you have no... He just taught them. Church, when you get the word, don't let the winds and the storms of life Steal it out of you, out of you. What you hear today, keep it. I ask you again, who are you feeding? Who are you feeding? Let's go to the soul. Might have made that a little too big. If you can read that from the back row. Soul is your will, your mind, and your emotions. Your will has a whole lot to do with whether you're successful in spirit, you're successful in business, you're successful in whatever you do. <clears throat> your soul is, is the media part of your... You're a triune being, we're a spirit, soul, and when we have...
body. The body is your outer man, but we're talking about the soul right now. <clears throat> the soul, uh, it's the battleground for you. And I'll, I'll, this is from Brother Mike, chapter 1. And if you don't believe this, just put it on the shelf. But I suggest to you, most of the thing that we call the devil happens right here. The, the soul is the media. That's why we get the word mediator. You know, we have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Holy Ghost. The, Jesus is the mediator between us. That's why we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. He's the mediator. So your soul in you is the media. It takes in information. And it gives out information. It speaks to the body. It speaks to the soul. Does that make sense? Just like our media does today. It takes in information. I remember when Mark, Mark uh, Alford was running uh, in the primaries when he was a... a um, uh, what did he do at Fox 4? He was a anchorman. He said he would read the news and they would send him to the office as soon as he got through. I said, the office? He said, yeah, I felt like a little boy got spanked every time I read the news. I'd go to the office and the office would say, he said, I just read the news. I just read it. And the boss and all said, just don't read it all. He said, I got so tired of that. He said, I just wanted to read it all. And he said, don't read it all. Just, just read part of it. That's what really prompted him to run for office. Because, you know, we, the media just gives us what they want us to hear. Right? And if it conflicts with their politics, just leave that off. So the soul is the mediator. It's the media part of our being. It takes in information and it sends it to the spirit. Spirit says, no, that's not right. Are you with me? I'm just hypothetically. It sends it to spirit and the spirit says, no, that ain't right. Send it to the body. The body says, yeah, I like that. That's sensual. That feels good. But the Spirit says, no. That's why so many people are in a turmoil. This is where God lives. This is where God lives. <clears throat> this is why the Spirit says, <clears throat> I jotted down a note last In Hebrews it says, having their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Your body is where your senses are. Help me out. Hearing, taste, touch, smell, and sight. So your senses, your body, sends messages to the spirit. And the spirit sends them on to the to the uh, to the soul. The body sends a message to the soul: what it sees, what it hears, what it tastes, what it smells. And the spirit is the mediator. It sends it on to the spirit, and the spirit says, "No, that's not right." We got to watch the gauges. But your feelings will kill you. You know what Dave said? In an airplane, you got to watch the gauges. They don't lie. It may feel like we're going down. It may feel like our wings going to the side, as he said. Watch the gauges. His trainer says, watch the gauges. They don't lie. Watch the Spirit. Listen to the Spirit. When the Spirit says no, leave it alone. The, the body says, but it feels good. I like it. The Spirit says no. Sometimes you override it. And you do... And you, you override what the Spirit says. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. I, did I give you that one? Maybe out of order there. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh 
and what? Spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And not to be afraid of God, but in reverence to God. Follow God. Follow the Spirit. If we don't know the soul is a mediator, we'll just listen to anything. It, it mediates what the body says, tries to send the Spirit. Spirit sends it back to the soul, says no, 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 no. This is not right. Um, what was the last song you sang this morning? God still moves. It may not look like it sometimes, what the Spirit says, but God still moves. If you'll just listen to the Spirit, the Spirit will make you successful in whatever you're listening to. You know, I haven't made all, of, uh, all decisions right in my lifetime. But many times the Spirit has just spoken up in me concerning our business or spoken up in me concerning the church or, or some people. And, and uh, I mentioned to Linda one time when I pastored at Salem, I said, so-and-so, uh, I forget what I told her, and it didn't look like that was right. We found out months later that I was right. But the Spirit knew those things. I don't, I don't know everything about you. I'm not a policeman. I'm not trying to figure out everything about your life and your past. That's between you and the Lord. But sometimes the Lord reveals things like that. Anyway, uh, Jesus said one time, said, beware of what you hear. Beware of what your body's telling you. That's where your senses are. Beware. Take heed what you hear. In other words, be selective what you hear. And because what you hear, if you keep hearing that same thing over and over and over, is going to affect the whole lump. Your whole life. So take heed what you hear. See if what, what your body is saying, or what you're hearing, what you're smelling, taste, touch, or smell, or seeing, if it harmonizes with God. If it doesn't, don't do it. That's easy. Don't have to have a lot of rules and regulations if we just follow that. Amen? The Bible says in another place, walk in the Spirit. Follow this. Follow the Spirit. And you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Your mind has the ability. Your soul has the ability. Just as your Spirit has an ability to take spirit food, which is the Word of God, and turn it into a force called faith. Your soul has the ability to do the same thing. But your soul, if you feed it spirit, a soul food, which is the Word of God, it has the ability to turn that into a force called willpower. Have you found people, saw people, ever come across people who had no willpower? They probably didn't feed on the spirit. You know, people just eat mental candy, just what feels good. Don't, don't read the scriptures. Don't read good books. Dave Ramsey always says, read a book a month of something that will build your faith or build your business. I, I haven't been uh, doing that lately, but when I do read, I try to read something of the Spirit, something positive about the Spirit of God. Or I'll read something about finances that people who have won and are successful. I don't listen to people who tell me it won't work. I, as one guy said, uh, before somebody tells me how to grow corn, I want to look in their crib. If they don't have no corn, I don't want to listen to it. You know, I want to listen to somebody that's been successful in that area. <clears throat> somebody tells me how to, what to do at church and they ain't got one. <laughs> I just let it go in one ear and out the other, you know. <clears throat> it's difficult. You don't realize how difficult it is to pastor a church because I not only pastor you, I pastor your friends. As in today. I have a funeral of a guy who never, has never attended our church here except to a funeral. But guess what? When they call you, Linda, you just got to say, I'll be there. And it's amazing what they expect. You know, some some at the last minute, can you feed our family? Well, how many will be there? Well, 75, and i got to call you all real quick. Can you get get that much together? It's hard to do that. 
Pizza Hut helps us out <laughs> when that happens. But, you know, pastoring is not easy, but uh, it's rewarding. It's rewarding. So I'll, it gives me a chance to pray with the family. It gives me a chance to hold their hand. It helps me to be with them in their time of grief. <clears throat> anyway, at the Last Supper, Jesus was speaking to the disciples. Then he turns to Peter and he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. You know, wheat, <clears throat> they used to in the old, old primitive days to sift out the chaff from the wheat. They had a big fork and they'd scoop the wheat up and they'd had, wait till it was windy and they'd throw it up in the air and the chaff was lighter than the wheat and it would blow it off. Nowadays, we have combines. It still does the same thing, only it does it mechanically because if you've ever watched a combine, they got that big fan back there blowing it out behind them. It saves the wheat and it blows the chaff away. He says, Satan's desire to sift you as wheat. In other words, see what you're made out of. But Jesus went on and said, but I prayed for you. That's a good guy to pray for you. When Jesus prayed for you, it went. he wins. That your faith... won't fail but if you don't feed your spirit you don't have much faith you, you're wishy-washy it's just what everybody says and and you know i guess i guess uh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket no you know you read the bible i don't know how god's going to fix it but he said he's he's coming after a glorious church Without spot or wrinkle, that's, that's, you know, kids have spots and old people have wrinkles. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, it's going to be a church that's thriving. It's going to be a church that's uh, procreating. It's a cr church that's not going to be babies. It's going to be people, not people. It's, when I say old, I'm just talking about people. It's old people can be procreative in the spirit. I've seen people had no education, zero education could discern in the spirit and prophesy laser sharp. I've seen people with PhDs that didn't know sick of them about the scriptures, you know. So it's it's people who pay attention to what the spirit says. When you when you're strong in the spirit, you know, I'm not putting down education, but it, people that are, are strong in the spirit are discerning. People that are strong in the spirit can prophesy. People that are strong in the spirit just just seems to to function well in in God. Romans chapter four, verse seventeen. <clears throat> Thank you. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead, and calleth those things which be which be not as what. Now, this dead don't mean he's in the cemetery. His, meaning his body was dead as far as producing a child, okay? Go ahead. Who against hope did what? Believed in hope. When there was no hope that a hundred-year-old man could have a baby, he could, he could provide sperm for a child, he believed in hope. In other words, he just chose to believe what God said no matter what Dave talk about feelings no matter what your feelings are telling you so in order for him to believe in God God changed his name from Abram to Abraham so every time he come out of his tent and the neighbors say good morning Abraham they were saying good morning father of many nations see how important your words are it's important to speak what God says about you he had to change his name so that everybody spoke to him. They would be confessing or saying what God said. Who against, leave that back up there. <clears throat> Who against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of what? Many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Because that's what he said. Your seed will be as a sign of the sea. Go ahead. And being not weak in faith, he was strong in this part of what God had told him. So being not weak in faith, he considered not his five senses. 
he considered not his own body, which was dead as far as producing a child. When he was about a hundred years old, he didn't even consider his wife being old. She couldn't produce either. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the what? Promise of God through what? Unbelief causes you to stagger. Sometimes when you stagger, you fall. He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in, he is strong in this what God had said. Not what his body was saying. And his, his soul obeyed the spirit rather than the body. He, he forced it too. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's all of that one, right? Another one? And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to, amen. I'm telling you, if you've ever prayed for your kids, and if they're not walking with the Lord, God's faithful. God's faithful. Jesse, what he started in you and your seed He'll fulfill it, and he'll perform it. Whatever he started. Amen. So it's so important that we, we always follow the Spirit. So, now, the body has, a, has the ability to do something too. It'll take good healthy food that you give it, and it has the ability to take beans and potatoes and Whatever's healthy. <laughs> Cauliflower, <laughs> broccoli, <laughs> all that good stuff. It has the ability to take it and turn that into a force called strength. If you don't eat, you don't have strength. Larry and Patty yesterday and the girls was working hard, moving. Larry said, just going down the steps, his leg was getting shaky. <laughs> You know, that's because he hadn't eaten. You know, you're, when you feed your body, it has a, it has the ability. God has designed it in such a way to turn that into a force called strength. So your outer man needs food, but your soul needs some soul food. It's the word of God. Now, I'm not throwing stones at anybody. Uh, what I'm about to say. This is why I don't spend time watching movies. <laughs> Most every movie has an agenda. I learned that in college. And it's not what you see. It's something behind the scenes. How many read the book, The Shack? Stick your hand up real high. Some of you have. I looked at that book. I learned this in school. I looked at that book. I never read it before. And I just looked at the back. And I said, this guy... Is prejudice. And Linda said, how do you know? I said, well, I just, what I learned from school, and come to find out, he had been molested by some black people. This is no offense, LeBron, Julius, Ely, and Brandis. I'm no, no offense. So he became prejudiced. But guess what? In the book, guess who, who God was? A black woman. <laughs> God's eye, <I> get him. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying God's a black woman, but God does whatever he has to do to change your mind, to make you not prejudice. And God to him was a black woman in that book. So God's just working. He just wants us to feed our spirit, our soul, and our body with good stuff. Amen. Constantly. It's so important to feed your spirit with spirit food. So that you'll have faith. And when things are going bad. And when things are going rough. And when it seems like you can't pull out. And you can't. I don't have no more platelets. Or whatever. For Dave. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. You know why he's going to make it? Because Merle needs him. And Mike needs him. Kevin needs him. And all, him, all his family needs him. Linda said, and we need him. <laughs> I agree. I agree. 
I, I so appreciate when he shares. He's, he'll stop me after service and say a word or two. And it's always something that, that feeds my spirit. It feeds my spirit. I want to tell this on him, and I needed it. He, one Sunday, a long time ago, he said, Pastor, don't ever tell us this is new. Because I was saying, this might be new to you, <clears throat> but, and then I'd share. He said, don't tell us. He says, what you're saying, I believe it. But when you say it's new, my Baptist background jumps up and tries to defy it. Or something that, so something that effect. I might have not said it exactly. <clears throat> so, you know, this is just the spirit. <laughs> follow this. Follow. Build your spirit, man. You know, Patty is new to the things of the spirit. I'll just talk on to Patty this morning. And their house is got a path. And boxes this high on each side of the path. Because <laughs> they had to get their U-Haul truck back. Now, yesterday, she really thought seriously about sleeping in this morning. <clears throat> and that is that was what this was telling her. She didn't feel good. She felt weak. So she had to tell. She sent a message. Her body sent a message to the soul. And the soul sent it to the spirit. And the spirit says, no, go. Because the soul is a mediator. It, it mediates. It's the media part of you. It takes in information. It can go either way. So if your spirit is strong, the Bible talks about having your senses exercised to know good and evil so that immediately we'll know what the right thing to do. I, I texted her this morning and I shared with her as a time when I drove for Walmart that I had to work. I was working nights. So I would drive all night long, 600 miles or so, 700 sometimes, get home about 8 to 8.30, take a quick shower and come on. Now, I couldn't just sit and fold my hands back there. I had to get up here and speak. So before I could lay down at night in the truck through the week, I had my Bible, my strong concordance, and I spent, I didn't get to sleep my 10 hours because I studied. But I was still tired. I so wore out time I got here on Sunday. It wasn't this building, but time I got here on Sunday, my body was screaming at me. Just let somebody else do it today. But that was my responsibility. Dave's been notified. <laughs> just my body was screaming at me just one, just this time. Nobody will care just this time. You know when this time happens, the second time will be easier. The third time will be easier than that. And pretty soon you've just, you just say, I'll resign, get somebody else. You've just got to keep going. You've got to let your spirit give you some stamina. Missed a good chance to say amen. amen. So, stamina. I remember uh, some of you have come, come here when you're very, 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 very sick, and I knew it. But that spoke volumes to me, that you fulfilled your job. Now, if you're in an emergency room, that's a different story. <laughs> you can't come because you've got to wait your five hours until somebody can get to you, right? Anyway, it's so important that you feed your spirit spirit food, feed your soul man, soul food, good, good uh, word of God so that you'll have a strong will and mind and your emotions. Your emotions won't be affected by this, but by your spirit. It won't be affected by your body, but by your spirit. Amen? Father, I just thank you for good listeners today. Thank you, Lord, that it's when we listen to the Spirit and we, we obey the Spirit and we follow the Spirit, it just helps us in our time of need. Lord, you said in the Scriptures to cast down imaginations. When our soul seems to win out and our soul is strong and our, not, and our spirit's not so strong, it creates images and you said to cast down images and make every thought come into the obedience of Christ. Make every thought obey Christ. 
we'll cast those things down, all those images. But Lord, when our spirit's strong, we have images that we can make it. We have images in our mind that we'll be successful in this area. We have images that God is good and God is real and healing is for us today. I thank you for that. I thank you that we're going to continue to make our, give our spirit space to be strong and speak loud to us and loud to our soul. And our soul becomes so, so strong that immediately when what we see, hear, taste, touch, or smell is not in harmony with the Word of God, it will cast it down. And an image of the opposite will rise strong within us. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord, and I live my That's what honors God. That's what brings glory to God. So I love you, Lord. And I Anybody want us to pray for you today? Anybody? Feel free to come forward. All right. Amen. Yes, God bless you. Jesus. God bless you. Listen to the word today. Be careful. Hey, young people, 
Ellie, Mira, Juju, uh, Brandis, <laughs> and all the rest of you. Really be careful what you hear. Listen to the songs that you hear and sing. If it feeds your spirit, if it makes your spirit strong, it's great. If it's songs that tear us apart, if it's songs that talks about anything that's not of God, I wouldn't listen to it. There's rappers out there that do good rapping. There's, there's some rock and roll that's good songs. There's some country that's some good songs. We was in a place yesterday and was playing a, a country song, and I said, listen to that, Linda. That has good words to it. Good words to it. There's some of those songs that are, are better than some of our hymn book songs. There's a song that we used to sing at our church a long time ago. Carl, I don't know if you can get, remember the, how that goes. Larry could help me out. It says, Hold the fort, for I am coming. The second verse goes like this. Uh, you remember it, Larry? Not too well. Uh, something about... Struggling through. Uh, Oh, my comrades. Comrade, comrade, see the mighty host advancing. Satan. M ma mighty men around us falling, Satan leading on. No wonder we had a bad service. <laughs> that didn't inspire faith in anybody. It was in a hymn book, and it was called a hymn. A hymn is a doctrine. And so many people believe the, do the doctrine of the devil is so strong. So strong. Listen, Jesus said after the resurrection, all power is given me in heaven and earth. All power. Amen. I sang that one time. and we, When we'd sing that at our church, and most churches I raised up in, everybody would, the chorus went, you know what, Larry? Wave the answer back to heaven. So everybody got their handkerchiefs, and we did that. So I got my handkerchief out and I said, hold my comrades, mighty men have found us are falling. I just had a great big wooden pulpit and I just kept getting lower and lower and lower and finally all they could see was barely my hanky barely going like this. <laughs> it, 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 it painted a picture in their mind of what we're singing. What we're singing didn't build this part of us. It built fear. It built it, uh, uh, I can't make it. All we could sing about, honestly, all we could sing about was dying, getting to heaven. Nobody talked about occupying and sharing with the world. Right. Jesus loves them. Nobody said that in my church. Good people love the Lord. I'm not putting them down. Good folks. But, you know, I'm glad the Lord has revealed something better. Amen. Amen. So build your spirit. Make it strong in Jesus' name. God bless you. Brother Mike. Brother Richardson was coming up. Okay. Come on up here. He won prayer. Okay. all sorts of doubts to come in your mind and uh, well you're supposed to be praying not me <laughs> and um, uh, I, I just appreciate your prayers you know uh, to to go through this period with faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, yeah the doctors have their things to say but the, 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 there has to be faith if, if you don't have that I tell you, the doctors have a way of wearing you down, you know. Amen. Anyway. Amen. Yeah. You see, what affects him affects her. Yeah. Dan, would you and Debbie come up here? Amen. Larry? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the stripes you took on your back. For, for the healing and for platelets for my brother. Thank you, Father. We're not going to be led totally by what we see, hear, taste, or smell. But, Father, we'll just be led by what the Spirit says. 
Thank you for wonderful doctors and all of that, but thank you, Lord. You're the great physician. You can cause these platelets to be normal in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, strengthen their heart, strengthen their spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Think of God. Think of God. We think of him as being way up there 50 miles north of Mars, but think of him being in you and think of him being excited when you say words of faith, words that honor him. Maybe that's why the Spirit of God is grieved in us sometimes when we say things that the senses tell us. Help us, Lord. Help us all, Lord, to speak life. Life words. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Have a good week, y'all. Bless you.